Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks. And today's lesson is the first in a series where I will demonstrate how to integrate Excel data with an Access database. We're going to be taking banking transactions from two different sources, our original set of transactions, as well as a set that came from another source which contains newer transactions. Notice that while we're still here in Excel, that we come to the Data tab and we have a series of commands to get external data from Access and some other sources, but we don't have a set of commands for sending information directly from Excel to Access. So our process will begin over here in Access where we have sets of commands to both import as well as export the data. Now, before we begin this process, let's take a look at what we're working with. So over here in the banking transactions, notice that our top row has the field headers. It has the column headers, and they are clearly identified as field headers because we set them off with bold formatting. We've done the same over here with the new transactions. Now, it's generally a good practice to close down the file that you are going to send to another program. It's not necessary, but I generally recommend in today's lesson, I'm going to keep this file open, and now I'm going to switch over here to Access. So we have a new database over here in Access, but we don't have any information in it yet. Our table information is going to come from Excel. So on the ribbon, go to the External Data tab, and in the Import group, don't confuse it with Export, in the Import group, we want to import information from Excel. Now we'll walk through the wizard. Notice over here that I have two choices. I can import the source data, or I can link to the original data source. Now, we're going to link later on in the lesson. So I'm going to choose to import, and now let's identify where that information is. So it's in this directory, but we want to make sure that we select the file that contains the information. So now that we have that selected, let's click OK. Now remember, in the Excel workbook, we have four worksheets. So let's identify the worksheet that we want to import. So we have date, source, branch, type, and amount. Now notice over here in the date field, notice the serial numbers that we have here. If I switch back here to the Excel worksheet, you see that these are dates. But remember that Excel stores a date as a serial number. We'll format it to show it as a date, but it's stored as a number. Now, the other field that I want to draw attention to is the amount. So the amount over here, we want to make sure that it contains values and not formulas. If you try to import an Excel worksheet that contains formulas, don't do it. That's a formula for disaster, so convert them to values. All right, now our first row contains the column headers. Yes, let's take the next step. And now let's go through and define the data type. So over here for our date, it is going to be stored as a date or a time field. The text fields for source and branch and type, and then the amount will come in as currency. And again, remember, it's a value and not a formula. Take the next step. Now, here's a major difference between Excel and Access. Access uses primary keys. Access uses keys over here so that it can relate one table to the next. Let's take the default and let Access add a primary key to our table. Click Next. And now, what do we want to name it? Well, by default, it's going to take the name of the worksheet tab that we had. So if it were Sheet 1, it would bring it in as Sheet 1. So we have Banking Transactions. Let's click Finish. And now, notice over here that if we are importing information from this Excel worksheet on a regular basis, we could save this as a definition. So it would save us time and pretty much automate the process. We're going to say this is a one-off transaction, so we won't do it. Now let's come over here and take a look at the table. So here is the primary key that's been added. Notice that there's sequential numbers. It's what's called an, an auto number. And then we have our date. And remember, they were stored as serial numbers. But over here, they're displayed as a date. And we can change the format. We have our text. And over here, we have our currency with two decimal places. So coming down here, we can see that there are 678 records. To come down to the last record, we click here. There's 678 records. And if we want to add a new record, we can do that. Let's go back up here to the top.
And now let's come in to the design view for our access table. So moving over here into design view, we see that our new primary key is set up as a, a, to increment. It's set up as an auto number and it is set up to be indexed so that there are no duplicates allowed. Now, Access adds this number automatically. We do not, in this case, add that number. Now, let's come back here into Table View, right mouse click, and say, let's come over here into Data Sheet View. All right, now let's close this. And what we want to do next is we want to append our second Excel worksheet. So we already imported the banking transactions. What we want to do over here is take the new transactions and append them to the table that we established in Access. So once again, let's come over here into Access. We'll again go to the external data tab of the ribbon. We want to import information from Excel. Now, in this case, we already have a table in our Access database, so notice that we have a second choice over here. We want to, in this case, append information from our data set to this table. If I had additional tables, they'd be in the dropdown. Once again, let's go through and identify the exact file. Now, I have these as separate worksheets, but I collected them together into this workbook. So over here, I want to make sure that I'm working with the correct file. Click OK. And once again, we see the four worksheets that we have here. So new transactions, and again, four headers over here. Click Next. And now, again, the first row contains the column headers. Click Next. Where do we want to import it? Where are we appending it to? So now let's click Finish. And again, we have the, uh, the dialog box over here that if we're doing this on a regular basis, we could save these import steps as a definition. So we don't want to do that. Now remember, we had 678 records before we append it. Now we have 753 records. So there you see how easy it was to append that information. All right, now let's go back and let's. I'm going to demonstrate how we can link the information to the original source, the Excel worksheet. So over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up another worksheet. I'm going to go to the Office button. And I'm going to come over here, and as the separate worksheet, I'm going to come down here to the new transactions. This is the table that I'm going to link to Access. All right, so now let's again return to Access, and this time again, external data, Excel. And what I want to do is I want to link to the original data source, which is the Excel worksheet. Let's identify the source. Now this time, remember that I'm linking back here to that separate worksheet to demonstrate how linking works. So we're linking the data to the original source. Click OK. And again, let's just take all the defaults. The information is identified correctly. And I want to bring it in as a linked table called New Transactions. Click Finish. Now, it's easy to spot when we have a link. Do you notice the difference between the banking transactions table and the new transactions? So the new transactions has an icon demonstrating that it's linked to the original source. So if I come over here and I have 75 records, but notice that when we've linked to the original Excel source, if I try to delete a record, notice that it's grayed out. If I try to add a new record, I don't have that option because the data is controlled over here by the source, which in this case is an Excel worksheet. So coming back over here, what I could do, let's use Control End to come down here to the bottom. Let's add in another transaction for June 4th. And this time, let's make it a teller. And let's put it in Main Street. And let's make it a CD, Certificate of Deposit. And let's make it for $10,000. All right, now, what we want to do is, of course, save this. So now I'm going to save this. And now what I want to do is I want to see if that information has been updated in Access. So come over here into Access. What we want to do is we want to make sure that that record is now in there. So in order to do that, we're going to have to refresh 
the data. So if I close this down and now open it up again, now when we come back here we can see that we have 76 records. So we had 75 before we refreshed it. And I refreshed it a simple way. I closed it and then opened it up again. So there's that deposit for $10,000. So when we link to a source, when we link to a source which is Excel, we cannot make a change in the access database. We make the change in the source which is Excel and then we refresh the data. When we're importing the information, we have two choices. We can import it with a link, or we can import it, and then we can, if we have the data set up with the same headers, we can append that data. So there you've learned the first step in integrating Excel data with an Access database, and I'll look for you in the next lesson.